This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast episode 416. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, ready to talk geeky with all of you guys out there. We got a crew, first of all, joining us from Studio C in the Big D, Dormont, PA. He is the uh, gadget guru at Big Bank International Esquire. He is John Chichilla. The JC in the Big D. In Studio C. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Chilla. Hey, how's it going tonight? Oh, it's going good. It's going good. Uh, and also with us in studio, he was here after, after his walkabout uh, amongst the Microsoft people. He is Ron Krauss with us as well. Another gadget guru of sorts with Big Bank International Esquire. Hello. Oh, I didn't. Wait, why is that? Hey, there. Try now. Hello. There he is. Hi. Hey. First shots. Yes. Yes. Those adjustments didn't work. How you doing, sir? I'm very good. How about yourself? I'm pretty good. You're, you're you're fresh off of your Microsoft peoples and Google announcements yeah. and and everything. And I, I can't wait to hear what uh what you're, what you're bringing back to us here. Other than the swag, the swag. Chilly, you missed the swag table. That's I okay. The I, swag table? He won't miss the swag table. It'll be at work. You're, oh, is it? It's coming in. I yeah. Can, oh, that's great. That's great. You you tell me I got first dibs up before before Chilla. Yeah, you did. Ah, oh, Chilla, gonna be so <laughs> jealous. That's gonna be my awesome thing. It's a oh, I should have grabbed it. Um, it, it's a it's a plushy um um iPhone stand. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty great. It's pretty great. Oh, I got, throw it at me. Throw it at me because it's plushy. Oh no. Oh, that's a good catch. Does it have a that Microsoft was, logo? There it is, right it? there. It's actually an Intel Lenovo oh. uh, situation there. And um, it's, just it's gonna, a pillow for your phone. It is a pillow for my phone, so my my phone can take a nap, and yeah. and it works with my. It is compatible with my 8s as well, so uh, feeling pretty good about that. You know so, what you should do is 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 mount a um a charger, a wireless charger in there. <laughs> <laughs> I have not. I have yet to use a wireless charger with this phone. Um, oh, it's and, amazing! Yeah, I, that needs to happen. For sure, I'm really I'm realizing a lot of features with this phone that I maybe have not uh, gotten into, uh, such as like I haven't played much with like the photo options, okay. like all those like weird you know, like the portrait mode, yeah, and like all the that portrait stuff. modes and stuff like that. I've been making I've been taking kick ass photos with it, um, but I haven't um, really kind of played with it too much. Like, how do you do? Does it, can I do a? Oh, I can't do a selfie with this. We'll just make Krauss. Um, let's see, natural light, studio light, contour light. Like where's the one? Where's the one where like it changes everything behind you? That's portrait mode, isn't it? Is it portrait? I don't know. I, I'm seeing. I'm when, seeing when you go to portrait, there's a thing along the bottom that you can switch between oh, the, the different modes yeah. within portrait. Yeah, and I'm not seeing like contour light. I don't know. Square pano. No, those are there. Uh, man, we need to start the rest of the show. But anyways, this is the Awesome Cast. You can check us out <laughs> at awesomecast.com. Uh, you can also email us, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Tweet us at awesomecast. Facebook us on awesomecast. And make sure you like that page so you know when we go live here on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time with the Awesome awesome Cast chat and live. And thank you, Dave Podner, Alex Cars, and Wheels out there for joining us here in the chat as well please subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast uh app and watch video versions of the uh of the of, of the versions on facebook and youtube yes we're doing fine and like i said we're there at 7 p.m eastern time thank you to our our streaming partners rivers edge pgh.com that carries us on saturday mornings at 9 a.m eastern time and our friends on the west coast the 405 media.com that carries us weekdays 9 a.m pacific time noon eastern and if you want to be part of the studio audience, or if you want to hit up our audience with whatever you want to get out there, you can uh, uh, get advertising or uh, attendance info uh, from producer Missy over at Awesomecast at Sorgatron Media. 
Com. Thank you to our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash awesomecast. If you guys find value, please, uh, we encourage you to contribute over there and help us literally keep the lights on here in the studio. Thank you to our friends at the Coffee Club $5 level. They get some gold content when we put that out there. Some bonus stuff we don't talk about on the show. Uh, Matt Weller and John Dickey DeGore, as well as the fan of the show, dollar level, Mike Cole Fedor. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Patreon.com slash awesomecast. People were writing notes in all caps to me. Oh, Chilla, Chilla, are you worried about my awesome thing of the week? No, that's Missy. Oh, oh, I thought I was you were actually going to. Oh, there's yeah. two clickies there. I see. There's two clickies. Well, I, you know what? I'll tell you about a little game I've been playing. Um, so, we, uh, Chachi and I have always had fun when uh, you're out and about and you see, like, uh, uh, you know, like, like, boot screens and things like that like why is this atm updating windows xp in, in 2017 you know you know stuff, like situations uh-huh. like that right and i in my walkabouts and everything last week um i i, I tend to i found several instances and i would just like like send it to him and you know chachi's an it guy so it kind of sticks out to him um so for instance i was over at the Monroeville mall and i caught this one if you guys are on visuals um their little um you know vertical vertical uh, billboards um are apparently sideways monitors that uh were booting um i, I sent it to chachi it says it looks like the hard drive probably failed on this one because it's getting an error and it just kept cycling the boot yep. um cycle on it no not that one um there's another one there uh so uh but yeah it looks like it was it was having a pretty bad error boot boot sequence will uh was it automatically re- repeat <laughs> so then I found this one. This one made me sad. This was uh, this was the, the the monitor next to um, the the Mister Rogers exhibit in the airport uh, here in Pittsburgh, and uh, it had a, uh, a standing by uh, going into standby mode uh, screen. It looks like I think that's a Windows Vista screen. Yes, it is uh, in the middle there. So that made me a little sad. Um, won't you be my neighbor? Won't you be my tech support uh, there? <laughs> Although, if you think about it, Sorg. That's probably not an internet connected device. Right. So technically, does it matter that that it's running that version of the OS? No. If it's if it's standalone. Oh no, a, no. I wasn't I, I, I wasn't I wasn't calling out that it's yeah. still Windows seven. I was just identifying. Oh okay. you know, because I don't think I don't think anything like this should be running anything other than seven at this point. Yeah. So uh, until that's completely end of life and maybe not. Like I okay, I worry if my ATM is like Windows XP at this point. Yeah. That concerns me. But not like the display, you know. Hey, the, at least the, they're not. A few years ago, they were all OS2. I'm just <laughs> OS2. Wow. Um, and then the one, I sent this one to Chachi, and uh, he responded, that one makes my soul hurt. Because, um, you know, everybody's got the, the, the video displays of the menus, right? Yeah. Like, like it seems like almost every, every restaurant seems to have that these days. So I was in, I think this was in... My connector in Baltimore, and um, it was a venue. It was a joint called uh, Nature's Kitchen, and Who did? Uh, what's that? Nothing. And there's uh, two screens side by side. It looks like just an extended display, and uh, it, it's uh, definitely Windows Seven. Um, you see the icons. Well, I didn't take a close look at those icons yet, uh, but they just pulled up what looks like um, PowerPoint, and it's just in a window <laughs> in PowerPoint. <laughs> they didn't even like like full screen the window on the one screen nice. with the, with the entire uh, menu in it so people could still read it. Um, it's just it's it's not even like even even the PowerPoint window is he, isn't hit, taking up an entire screen. You have to hit like F like, five or what something. What did we do? Like just into double click mode. on the top of it or something? Yeah, yeah. or they're like or or maybe they were hitting presentation mode or full screen and it kept going to another slide and we're like we don't know how to stop it. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know what the situation is. I really wanted to find out, uh, but I had to hit my plane. Uh, so, so that was my adventures. That was my less, I guess, less than awesome thing. Just, just finding these things in a wild. I, 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 yeah, go ahead. It, it, it's interesting that you bring this up because have you ever? Two comments on this. Have you ever read Twenty Six Hundred Magazine, which is like the Hackers Quarterly? I don't know if they even still print it anymore. No, no, I don't know about that. So there used to be there used to be a magazine that came out every three months. It was called Twenty Six Hundred, and it was a, a bunch of hacker type. But before blogs were big, there was this thing called print. What? Um, and, and and what they would do on the back cover of the magazine every month is they focused on 
two pay phones, you typically from different countries. So you could see all these different pay phones tie into that years later. I've been, I actually check probably once a month. There's, there's a blog that actually does, um, they cover screen captures of code from movies, TV, all different kinds of stuff. Oh, nice. Um, and one of the things, and what actually brought me to that site the first time was, if you ever watch Iron Man, the first the, the first Iron Man movie, um, when he's booting up the the uh, suit that he built in the cave, mm-hmm. that they took a screen capture of that code and looked at what what the special effects people actually grabbed the sample code from. And it's from like a Lego robotics set. <laughs> hmm. So, the, so, the, so they, they go through all these different TV shows and different, different um, things and actually grab screenshots of the code and then figure out where they grabbed that sample from. A lot of times it's like open source libraries and all kinds of different That's things, awesome. but it would be, I, I, I would, I would hazard to guess that if you just started a secondary blog that was just screen errors from random stuff, I bet you'd be amazed at how many people would contribute and go there and look at this all This has of to exist pictures. already. This has to exist already, right? Do people Instagram still, account. Do, that is an Instagram account. Is that, is that, wait, so here's another question. Instead of starting a Tumblr, do we just start an Instagram account? I think so. I don't sure, think, why not? I don't think people do Tumblr. Do people still do Tumblr? I don't know. People still do Tumblr. I mean, this it, this could be our version. Of, this could be the awesome cast version of uh, Yin's Camp Park. Yes, yes, it could. So hmm. I'm telling you, you could do that. That's something we're gonna have to do. And, yeah. Here. I mean, what do you call it? Wait, what do you call it though? <laughs> Help me out. Help me. Let's crowdsource this thing. Crash override. Cra- <laughs> nice. <laughs> you can't tell me there's not already a crash, crash over and, crash override. And burn. Crash and burn. Crash and burn. I have the maximum number of Instagram accounts on my phone. So can you um, can you make it? I guess everyone could log in. Uh, my question would be: Can you make it where a bunch of us could contribute? Because this would be super fun. Oh, I, just, I, I just need that to share. I just need awesome. to share the, share the, the password with you guys. You know, and, and if people tag us, then we can reshare that on Instagram. Exactly. Uh, we just created a whole new project. Oh yes, and that is my awesome thing of the week. And I love that he did the whole reference because I was going to say, "Ooh, hard copy" when he talked about <laughs> print magazine, which is also. By from the way, that disclaimer: same movie. we do have our wonderful friends at Pittsburgh Current up the street that we do a podcast for. That is a biweekly print publication here in Pittsburgh. So we don't hate publications. No, no, no. Well, they also do the online and they do the podcasting with there us and Facebook Live and all that. So I mean, it's it's they're multi they're multimedia, but. They're like a print publication, you know. So, but try and do it in a smart way. So, anyways, uh, Chilla, what is your awesome thing of the week? So, my and, awesome and, and bear with me because I need to tab over and find your awesome thing. <laughs> so, um, Google made a number of announcements today. What? Um, <clears throat> yeah, there was there was there what? was a number hardware of things, hardware, hardware things. things, and I, I we'll get to it in a minute. But price obviously was no. Was not at the forefront of all of the <laughs> not, announcements today. Yes. None of them. Zero. So, so one of the things that they announced was the new Pixel Slate, which is their answer to the Microsoft Surface, and I would think the um, iPad. Um, the device comes in at a little under two pounds, one point six pounds. Gets twelve hours on a charge, but wait for it. Um, is not running Android. It's running Chrome, much like their the Pixel. I can't remember the other. But it was a Pixel C, um, but it, it was pretty cool. What I liked about it was they they have a clip on folio style keyboard with a rather large trackpad, which I which I, I really liked the look of. They called them I think hush keys, so they're they're quiet. You can also get a pen. Um, none of this comes, well, I'm sure there'll be, um, kind of combined packages with all the, the, the fun stuff in it, but everything is kind of modular and can be bought one at a time. Okay. They call there's the, the pixel book pen. Um, the interesting thing to me about the slate is that the UI changes as you convert it from tablet to more laptop to plugging in a mouse. 
et cetera. And it kind of takes care, looks at what you have plugged into it and then makes minor tweaks to the, the UI. So if it's just simply in tablet mode, it doesn't give you the real windowed, um, the, the windows that you're going to drag around. It, it kind of puts you into almost the side-by-side -side that iOS has mm -hmm. for kind of minimalistic multitasking perspective. thought it was pretty cool. They built the, they, it actually has a fingerprint sensor um, and they built that into the power button. The device does have multiple USB-C ports um, that, and dual eight megapixel cameras. I was surprised that they took a moment to actually say, hey, and if you want to take, for all your for all you photographers out there, we, we have eight megapixel cameras on the front and back. The back's made, meant for taking pictures. The front's made for doing duo calls um, or I'm guessing hangouts. Um, what surprised me was the device is going to come in multiple configurations, not just from a um, kind of disk storage, but also from a memory perspective. I think they start at four gig and work their way up to 16 um, gigs of RAM on there. But the devices, and they're going to go from all the way from the Intel core, I think it's M3 up through the i7. Um, so there'll be a number of processors, uh, sizes, and uh, memory configurations. I'll be interested to see if they kind of do T-shirt sizes of small, medium, large, where uh, it's just a <clears throat> processor RAM um, storage kind of thing where you, you can't really mix it. It's not fully customizable. I, I, I'm interested to see how they do that. Maybe I missed that part of the announcement, but they, they started $599 just for this the tablet itself. It's a 200 keyboard folio add-on and then a hundred bucks for the the pen. So you're looking at 900 for the base price if you get the, the two add-ons, which I, I'd be interested as we were talking um, earlier, I'd be interested if you took the baseline of an iPad, a MacBook and a phone, and then did the baseline of Google like phone, tablet slash laptop, and then baseline Microsoft uh, well, they don't really have a phone. I guess you really can't do that. Maybe throw in an and a different Android device on there. It would be interesting to see what the baseline setup was for the average person if they had kind of all three, all three devices across the three different platforms. Um, but what I'm really interested in is how this switch is going forward. Are we going to see changes to Android to kind of adopt the the Chrome pieces, Chrome OS pieces? Is it, are we going to continue to see a blended mm -hmm. interaction between the two, or are we going to see something take over as the holistic future state of one OS of Google? Well, I think Krauss has some opinions on this since he has the first version of this. Yes. <laughs> I think he's as a, a upset. As a Pixel C owner, <laughs> um, I would say wait till version two. I, I'm sorry, but you know I kind of got burned just a little with uh, my Pixel C. Um, it's not going to get to uh, Android 9, uh, unfortunately, because uh, Google decided to stop supporting it. So, And don't get me wrong, I love this tablet. This tablet has essentially replaced my home computer. Well, I don't turn it on anymore. Aren't we all a little gun-shy now with Google in general? Um, because... You know, anything that we jump in on, anything new and, and fun looking that, that, you know, devices and services at this point, until you see like a version two that says, oh, hey, this is going to stick around for a while. I mean, the Nexus devices disappeared out of nowhere, right? And we went to these things, right. um, you know, and, and we there, and there was nothing to support you know, a next, like, after Nexus 7 kind of thing, situation. Well, the, the, so they left the 7-inch. So I don't know about that. They left the seven inch line and just had mm -hmm. the Pixel C. Right. But that also ran Android. But then they scrapped Android on tablets and yeah, went I to think, Chrome. Right. I think that's their focus is they're moving right. away from Android on tablets to go to, to get more Chrome. 
Not that I even have a problem with Chrome. In fact, I've been looking at it for a Chromebook for my uh, niece. Uh, so if anybody has a suggestion for a nine-year-old for a Chromebook, I would be interested in hearing what you have to say. <laughs> That's, um, I don't know. Is there, like, what would you need out of that? It's very interesting. It's an interesting rabbit hole to go down. There's a lot of good articles out there. Mm -hmm. um, basically, the big thing you want to search for is how long will the device be um, supported by Google? That's like the biggest thing. Uh, by the way, I do have an update here. Thanks to producer Missy, who is all kinds of awesome. You can now follow crash override on instagram nice and as soon as i get a chance i'll put those first few pictures up there it's crash period underscore period override yes that looks like a wait what kind of face is that but it looks like a face is that yeah. the, it was that the intention is, is that the intention that's what was available because crash override and all sorts of other varieties was taken so i was like let's do this okay okay all that right works. all right um so uh that you can follow crash override that has no posts or followers so far um and uh awesome okay. it's all of like two seconds old yeah 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 well hopefully we'll have a few um followers by the end of this uh, i'll be interested to see what they do and uh what they stick with for google uh going into this Krauss, what is your you like to bring us the gadgets and you like the, blu the bluetooth as well yes well while i was away at microsoft ignite we lost a man. My um, Bluetooth headset. You, got, well, you need to watch how you say that. <laughs> got swallowed up by the car or got Ooh. swallowed up by Florida. I don't know what oh. happened, but it, it's gone. It's no longer with us. Good soldier. <laughs> I've had it for over a year and a half. Um, I, I'm a big fan of Plantronics, mm -hmm. so I decided to upgrade. Um, oh, I there actually, it is right there. I actually won a video doorbell that Chilla is taking, and with the proceeds from that, I purchased this uh, Plantronics 5200. Um, very nice, over-the-ear style headphone. Um, my last one was the Edge, I believe, which is basically just the in-ear type. I tend to feel these are a little better to go over the ear. I think that's part of the reason why I lost it because it probably fell out in the car and then I could just not find it. Mm -hmm. And it, so so they're they say they're over the ear. It looks like there's a lot of kind of buttonage going on there. Yeah, there's um a, a volume up and down at the top, um on and off switch at the back, a couple buttons on the actual microphone itself. Uh it's a great headset, very good uh, noise cancellation. Um, I haven't had any issues with it yet whatsoever, although I have yet to hook it up to my big bank international PC mm -hmm. that sometimes will cause some issues. So okay. we'll see what happens. Is, is it because of, is it because of, um, permissions, uh, yeah, in the yeah, yeah normally, yeah, it's okay. just, but, but, and then I also bought the charge case, which is, uh, very, if you use these things like I do, it's a must, mm -hmm. um, you know, not only can you store the phone in it. It'll also charge the battery. It also has this nice little dock on the top. So if you're using it during the day, you can actually top it off by parking it right there at the top of the dock. So this is going for on Amazon. Uh, the the uh, charge case is $38.99 currently over on Amazon and $164 for the yeah, Bluetooth I didn't pay headset. That. You didn't pay that? I bought the refurbs. Yeah. I'm a big refurb guy. Okay. I think altogether I'm into it about eighty two bucks. That's not bad. Yeah. So and the 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 one thing I like about the fifty two hundred headset that they didn't have on the old model of the headset was the micro USB is right on the earpiece. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. So remember, I don't know if you remember like the you little dock had that thing you had to put on your keychain mm -hmm. to like line up the metal pins with a with a charge cord, or you had to make sure you always brought that charge case with you to be able to, to even charge up the device when the case was dead. So I thought they did a really good job of, of modifying that headset to kind of make it work standalone out on the road versus having to bring all the kit and caboodle with you. Yeah. Right. The charge docks optional, you know, it's not yep. something you need to have. Awesome. Awesome. Go check that out. Make uh sure you upgrade your firmware. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of a, an always kind of uh, point, right? 
Th that's the one device that I I have found. There, there's that device and a one of the Jabra devices that I've used where they, I don't know if they don't fully test like version one when it ships to make sure that it works with different Android and iOS and all and Mac and Windows, all all the different. Uh, all the different things that you could Bluetooth connect to. Um, I've, I've had to update that firmware like two or three times um, to make sure that I can maintain connectivity uh, with different types of devices. Okay. Awesome. Go check that out. Hey, I want to give a shout out to our friends here at the comic book pit. They're on the Sogertron media network and uh, another place where we get to geek out with something else here on the network. Um, they're, uh, just recently had, uh, of course their big, uh, dollar comic event down there on, in, at, uh, our, our friends, new dimension comics up in Elwood city. Uh, but comic book pit is Pittsburgh's longest running comic book podcast. It, run, it brings a fun conversational atmosphere to both long-term comic book fans and new readers that covers comic related news across all media types from movies, television, and insider industry news, uh, to reviews of weekly comic books. Find out more at comic book pit dot com and of course look for them on the sorgatron media podcast network i do uh, live streams of their new recordings uh whenever the internet works because we had a problem that last time they were in um but uh but no uh they've been uh, doing a really good thing and they were they're a big part of the comic book uh industry or our, our community here and it's cool to have them on board and doing their geeky thing and we're gonna look at, look at all these look at all these geeks looking through comic books there it's amazing I think I have 200 comic books in that stack that we're showing there if you guys are on the video with us. Go check them out, comicbookpit.com. And thank you so much to our friends out there um, for being on the network and also a part of PodCon. They were there representing a Pittsburgh PodCon as well, hanging out, giving away free comic books. Nice. Not BS ones. They were just like they were from the 70s. Wow. And they were just giving them away for anybody that came over and chatted with them. Um, that's a good way to make friends at PodCon. Um, they're putting it over on stage. Aaron Kleiber at the, uh, 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 geez, I can never remember the full name, the Dad Business Podcast. There's another name, there's another word in there. Um, but uh, they, they kept uh, telling people to go get comic books too. Hey, something cool happening here in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, Pittsburgh's first Lego store is about to open here up there in the Ross Park Mall. And uh, looking forward to that for sure. Um, I, I, yeah, we, I don't know if I've seen a Lego. No, I have walked past. Isn't there a Lego store in like Rockefeller? I don't know if you guys know this. <laughs> Isn't there a Lego <laughs> store in like Rockefeller Center, um, as well? Like, I mean, it feels like that there feels, is one in New York City. Yes, there, like, there's definitely one in New York City. Um, but and I think that's where I walked by it. But um, no, uh, no, it, it, this feels like the kind of thing that you would see in New York City. That there's a Nintendo store. That there's a Nike store. You know, you know, like those. Those kind of uh, really, uh, those kind of really um, trendy. Yeah, well, not trendy, but like, like dedicated brand stores like that, right? Um, but no, it's going to be up here in Ross Park Mall. We, guys, are we going to go on a field trip to this thing? Sure. <laughs> so I uh, love going to the Yuppie Mall. You know, I had never <laughs> been there much, I, and also like I realized when I was going to Monroe Vol Monroeville Mall this past week, and just decided to walk around since I was doing work over there. Um, I've never walked through that mall, like through the entire thing. Really? I've, I've gone to the food court. Well, I can tell you right now, I mean, as I a fat guy, yeah. I can't buy a damn thing in that mall. <laughs> but, well, yeah, yeah. It is that yeah. too. I mean, dude, well, at who least buys things clothes at a mall? Exactly. I don't know who these people are yeah. that are buying clothes at a mall. All right. Because I always look at the price tag. Like, I don't even, I don't care how many shirts you want me to buy to get a free one Hot Topic. I, they're, they're, it's not, I'm not happening. I'm not dropping 25 per. Right? Yeah, I can't get skinny jeans. No, that's not happening. Uh, so. is, is that why the only Microsoft stores in in Ross Park? Hey, I I, I was uh, just going to say that. That's the only reason I go there is for the Microsoft. Yeah, there, there's, oh, and the listen, Apple store for the one. Listen, there are two types of people uh, that go to the mall: the people that can shop in those stores, and the people that are just there for the Apple and the Microsoft stores. Yeah, you're right. Right, right? and maybe the arcade. If they still have one. Um, I don't do the food court. Food court. I like the food court. You they like do the have food, a court. food yeah. court. Yeah, and Ups they have a kids upstanding. The, the, the little kids play area is pretty decent too. Mm -hmm. I think. But anyways, 
Um, <laughs> and we have a couple stories here too from our friends on the Awesome Cast Facebook group. Please, please join that Awesome Cast Facebook group so you guys can contribute as well. Um, for instance, um, this was one. There, there's a couple of things with iOS 12 uh, or or Apple in general. This was a not great one. Uh, Alex Cars shared that apparently uh, the Apple Watch Daylight Savings bug leaves series, series four devices in a in a loop. Uh, this uh, Australia had their their daylight savings time. They they have a different than the rest of us, um, and that's where they discovered this early with this with this version. Mm. So, oops, oops, oops. Did, did did they have a fix for that on the site? Because that's the one thing that scares me about the Apple Watch is there's no like. Hey, plug this into a data cable and put it in like some kind of strange mode to to wipe it's it and restart all over there. again. Yeah, you're yeah, right. yeah. It, like it has to go to your phone. If and if something happens that that connection gets broken, there's got to be something. There's got to be some kind of mode. You well, can plug it in in and, the store. There's a way yeah. they can like take the band off, and there's a hidden panel, and they you can do. <laughs> I think you have to have a there's proprietary not much, connector. There's but not like much James here, Bond. but like there's a hidden panel on this thing. You know, I've never taken the band off of this thing. Yeah, it's under the band produced. on the one side, on the there's one like side. a little. How do you take the little, band off? You push which you way? You gotta push the little doohickey. And what doohickey? Server. Is there a doohickey? There's a button on the bottom. Yeah, oh there's a little shit! Button. There's a button on the bottom. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, it and, slides. And it, and it slides, right? Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And you know what? This thing, you know, it's on me all the time. Oh, and look, there's a little, there's a little like, no, yeah, there's a little panel in there. Look at that. It looks like it takes. I, a little I think pin. you have to pry that off. You got, oh, you got to pry it off. <laughs> Yeah, yeah they, probably have, they probably have a special proprietary and extraction. Now I'll never be able to put this back on. Oh, no, that's, that's nice. That's nice. Oh, I see. Yeah, you I can change the your bands every I've day, I've had this Sork. thing since, like, May, and I've never done this. That's the first time, I've huh? never done this. Yeah, oh, you're not one of the cool kids oh, with, the... with, like, different uh, band <laughs> color for each day of the week. I almost, bought the, I almost bought the one that's, like, it goes over it. Like, it, like, like you take the band off, and I think it goes in it. And it's like a Deadpool, um, like band, oh. but instead of them doing the proprietary thing on the ends, they just you just take the watch and stuff it in this plastic thing. So I'm like, I don't know if I trust that too well. <laughs> yeah, that's they had different versions, of different idea. superheroes. It was at that um uh, lunchbox store, was it? Um, oh, okay, box, box lunch, lunch, box lunch store. That, I haven't uh, been Chile. there yet. I'm dying to go. That's, that's the first time I've seen those. And now, guys, I, I would like to point out that even though Sorg might not have known about that, I did. Nice. Okay. Do you have different watch bands I don't know about? No, but I knew that they were interchangeable and I knew how to do it. Well, I knew they were interchangeable. I just never had any reason to do it because I'm like, well, what am I going to do with that? So I am not. You know, I've I've come to this phase in my life where I haven't been exploring things as much as I used to because I'm too busy doing things. Don't be an old man, sword. I, I'm turning into an old man, and and I don't know what to do about it. Like I I, do, I need. I need my my exploratory time, my fine time, my creative time, and I'm just not finding that. I'm not even finding time to watch Netflix. By the way, the Dragon Prince is amazing. I'm three episodes in, thanks to my plane ride. Um, but yeah, um, I'm waiting for my stuff. To you work. know, I hit the big five zero this year, right? Oh yeah, and yeah. how you, and how are you managing with that? I'm great. Yeah, I'm still. You gotta be. You know, I do what I gotta do. That's all. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm going to see if this one loads here. I'm having a little bit of trouble over here, but um, according to, did I click on the right thing? Yes, the Riz, according to the Riz sharing from IGN, PlayStation Network uh, may finally be getting an option to for users to change their names. Didn't this just drop for Xbox as well? Name changes? Yes. No, name no? changes have been around on the Xbox for a long time. It has for a while? They did cost... It it wasn't free. You had to pay, or to maybe it was name? the first ones free, and then after that, it, oh. it cost something. But yes, th- 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 they've had that for a while. The real issue is, is if you like discontinue your subscription and then trying to reactivate it. Oh, good luck under that old name. Just give up. Yeah, it, Mean Joe, rest in peace. That was my first Mean gamer. Joe. <laughs> that was my first gamer tag. Why Mean Joe? I don't know. Just I liked Mean Joe Green when I was a kid. Oh, so, uh, you know. okay. I got you. I got yeah. you. Pokemon. Yeah, I, I had to change the spelling of fiber optic just so I could maintain at least the name. Yeah. It's just spelled differently. Although um, I like Crazy Krause better anyway. So so uh, uh, Dave Ponder over there on the Tiny Shutter podcast, he's been playing with his, uh, he's been he's been playing with iOS 12 and the, um, the oh no, why is, what's loading? I had this ready to go. 
He's been playing with Ann emojis in FaceTime um, with, I think, his dad on here. And, uh, oh, it's still loading. That's why. And uh, there's, <laughs> this is amazing. There's somebody holding a dog as a dog. Um, this one is. Uh, Someone holding a dog as a dog. Yes, yes. Somebody's got a really cool, I guess, this is their, their, their custom Ann emoji of their face up here. Um, it looks cool. Just for, like, stills and stuff on from a phone. Um, I don't know. Well, I guess Missy would be the only one that I know that could. Oh, right, because you can't do that, No, right? I can't do that because I don't have the face stuff. So everybody can call me with their iPhone X, um, be it Katie or Busy or something. But um, nope, not me. Although it seems it has been amazing to see how many people have those 10s um, yeah. or the new 10s or, or, and stuff like that. So it's it's been it's it's obvious at this point, too. So I think that's because I have Facebook open. Sorry about that. Um but and also from Brian, our friend Brian over at the River's Edge, um, he's excited about the, the there's a review of for the Lenovo Smart Display. Um, this has Google Assistant with with a screen, making it an ideal kitchen companion. He says, and they have a review over there on Wired as well. Um, I think this is something I've been hearing about on some of the podcasts. It's so hard when they describe these things and they kind of lose. Um, I'm, I'm sure we do the same thing here. It looks. A lot like an Amazon show. Is it me or I just maybe it's because I live in you know my wife and I are the house we own a duplex, mm-hmm. and so we live on the first floor of the duplex. I just don't have a need for a device like this. Like I usually have a tablet within a few steps. Okay. I just I, so you're a person that has a tablet. I, that doesn't mean that it's it's not useful. I mean, it's just not useful to you. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, to me, because uh, Google during their announcement today, they announced one of these devices also, and I just really struggle with what would I do with it. Well, first of all, and, where and, would I put it? Mm-hmm. I think it's a like desk calendar or kitchen calendar kind of thing. Like, and it's just accessible. Then. And maybe maybe if I had an eating kitchen. With like a table there, maybe mm-hmm. that would be a place to put it, mm-hmm. but I just don't. So, John, I, you I agree with you though, because when you look at these, like they always have to be wired in. The one that the one that Google announced today, they're like, you can put it anywhere and not have to worry because we didn't put a camera in ours. I'm like, okay, thanks. <laughs> Great. Really, really, your feature, yeah. your you're feature shaving them for put a camera in it? Seriously? I don't know. Yeah, I just yeah. what what is this world? But I think Facebook also announced one of these either late last week or over the weekend. I'm like, mm-hmm. really? Now Facebook's trying to get into this? I don't. Know. I, I like the I like the concept, uh, but I like the concept better as, hey, did you just upgrade your tablet? Take your old one, and put exactly. it on a, on some kind of prop up thing mm-hmm. and leave it in your kitchen. <laughs> yeah, it, it, but it's also but it, but again, it's a Google tablet, right? Yeah, in the long yeah, run. with some speakers, with some probably a little bit nicer uh, speaker array of some kind, I would think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just don't, I don't get it. I, I, I try to understand it, but I must live in too small of an. Uh, where, where place. I could see this coming in handy is if you had one of those snazzy doorbells where you can see out the front, um, like uh, Krauss was gracious enough to to sell to me. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> Taking that doorbell call to anyone that's in the house, um, I think works well. But again, you could just bring it up with your phone, bring it up with any other. It is curious. It is curious to see, like, what, what, yeah, what is that? What is that kind of, you know, where, where do you stretch that ability, right? Yeah. Um, But, but it's also, and it's just another receptacle that's easy to install, easy to have, easy to give grandma, right? To be able to do something like that, um, so I, I think that's more the difference, probably. Because um, yeah, I, I mean, I, if you hand grandma the tablet, there's too much going on. Whereas this is like ready made to say, "Hey, mm-hmm, do this." Right? Yeah, you're like, right. It, you don't have to do all the tablet things to make it work, which is like the next step of here. You should have an iPad because that's all you really need, grandma. Right? Like, like from a PC to this, like, oh, well, you have a, a, a you know Google tablet, iPad. You don't have to deal with PC things. Now it's like, well, tablet stuff's too hard. Here, here's your Google appliance to, to make this work. So 
it's it's just it's just that commoditizing of computing for the common folk a little bit. But but again, it's one of those weird things because like the price points are kind of all over the place. Like the home hub today was 150 bucks. The mm-hmm. Lenovo that we're talking about right now is 200. Mm-hmm. But the Lenovo has camera a camera, but the home hub doesn't. But the Echo. But then Show you can put it in your bedroom, echo. John. What's the what's the That's right. You can one? put in, you can put in your bedroom, John. You don't have no to worry camera. about it. Nobody has That's to watch That's right. You. No no chill a show off time. <laughs> like there, it, it's just there. There's so much sprawl in this in this area. It's 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 tough to make a decision. Well, it, it's also this is one of those things that everybody's going to take a shot at it, and then you know it's going to contract after mm-hmm. we, we we figure out our winners and losers in this in this space, right? Um, and what people are using it for. Yeah, exactly. Because I, mean, I think it's like, you know, we had, we have the conversation, same conversations happening with the Apple Watch. They put it out, and then they had to figure out what people used it for, and then they're <laughs> leading into it, right? With no, what they've and been you're updating. 100% right yeah. about that, yeah. I mean, what what better than that? It's like, oh, it's a watch that does this. Then, you know, like one conversation I was listening to recently um, on one of the podcasts was, was when they put it out, they thought apps were going to be the big deal on it. Like pulling up an app and interacting with an app. It's not. It's the health thing. Yeah. Right. I was going to say, mm-hmm. Sorg, since you got the watch, have you looked out the window yet and saw, saw yourself running down the street? No. Have you seen that commercial <laughs> on TV yet? No, I have not. It's like, um, what was that uh, Ke- Michael Keaton movie where he duplicated? Multiplicity? Multiplied himself. Yeah. The, the, if each, that's the feature of the new watch, I am in. Each each version of the person sees the better version of their person doing something better than what they were just doing it's it's quite an interesting commercial if you get a chance to watch it <laughs> all right no not that i've noticed so far but hey you know what sometimes i watch myself eating pizza on the internet nice that's weird that's like a weird like but it's good pizza that's a creepy transition it is good pizza because they're good friends at slice on broadway supporting pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza and i loved a couple weeks ago i got to do a little bit of a uh a dueling ad run uh in our in the middle of our panel with uh brian crawford with his uh funeral home and <laughs> uh so we were having fun with that it was just like a podcast movement where everybody's like making jokes about audible and casper mattresses like this is our casper mattress right but we 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 can't sleep on our, well we could sleep sleep on our pizza a stack of pizza boxes that sometimes amasses here in the studio could be quite comfortable anyways we should build furniture with it that is purely reuse anyways okay that's but let's talk about pizza guys our friend slice on broadway right up the street here in the original in beachview as well as other locations at uh, pnc park carnegie and the east end uh, thank you so much, uh, those guys, for supporting us and help feeding our guests here um, here on Tuesday nights with the awesome cast and our uh, long-running podcast night. Good people, and they don't mind giving us canceled orders. That was fun last week uh, when I had nobody in the studio but all the pizza. Uh, <laughs> I was there. You were here. You were here. But, um, but it no, was good. It was good. Yes. Oh, yeah. There was one with the bacon and the and the spinach and everything. Oh. I, I don't think I had much of that one before. I did tell you I was not allowed to eat that, right? So just keep yeah, talking about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll just keep that going and break your diet before you leave here, Krause. <laughs> Thank you. But anyways, yo, thanks. Thanks. Check them out. SliceOnBroadway.com. PJ underscore Slice on the Twitter. All right, guys. You know, uh, you know the robots are coming. And apparently um, now the construction jobs are not safe. Because robots are hanging drywall, according to this article here on Engadget. Uh, if uh, let's see, Japan's Advanced Industrial Scientific and Technology Institute, what is that? A I S T I. Uh, I was just seeing if that makes it like a really cool acronym, like a, like one of those anime movies with an evil corporation, but it doesn't that I can tell. Um, so they have built something called the HRP 5P. That's a relatable name. It's a humanoid bot that can uh, handle a variety of construction tasks, according to The Verge, where uh, there's either a staffing shortage or serious hazards. Oh, boy. Wait till the unions get a hold of this. Wait a minute. Were there staffing challenges or hazards that needs new drywall? Well, I, okay, this is the thing that they <laughs> demonstrated, right? Was the dry was the drywall, for instance? Um, I don't think that is an end all be all 
kind of situation. Um, the design, let's see, doesn't have much free, uh, freedom of moment, movement, but it makes up with numerous joints to flex. So it's, you know, in, there's, in the pictures it's showing, like, you know, it's able to take the drywall wall and put it in a place um, and perform, like, a task, right? So I think if there's a pretty repeatable tag uh, task for it, um so so it's and in japan this is an issue like there there is like there is a, 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 a it, it's housing shortages housing, and, yeah. well it's addressing population shortfalls through technology instead of immigration so they're actually for certain jobs like this they're they don't have enough people coming in you know to to do this whereas you know the argument here is not to get political, but certain groups come to this and take the jobs nobody else wants. Right. Them, they only have the robots. Right. <laughs> this is what it's turning into. This is complete. Like, Japan is just going to self-realize it as one of its animes at some point, yeah. isn't it? I mean, it, it really is, like, heading towards that. because. But they also have, like, a whole other set of uh, social and economical challenges than we do as a country. You know... My father's a drywall guy, so I'm I'm very well versed. Okay, okay. In the world of so, drywall. So, so I we, we got the picture up here. I didn't. I think there might be a video in here too. How how are you thinking about that technique that he's uh, and, is pulling and off? And let there? me tell you right now, drywall is a tough job. Oh, we got we got music. We got music. we got music. Sorry about that. That's all right. But um, drywall is a tough job, and there is a science to it. Unless you're building, like you said, in new construction. Where there's, you know, every room's on a 45 degree angle and everything like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this drywall robot would work well in, like, existing homes. Because you'd be surprised how off plumb your walls actually are. Mm -hmm. And so Especially it would if you be have, like, something from the 1930s in Pittsburgh. Exactly. Right? But also, like, I also wonder what that looks like in Japan. Like, do they have as old of stuff? Right going on there are they a lot of is it a lot of new build have they done you know tear down and rebuild a lot more than perhaps we have here um you know it, it, well, when you have so many robots you can just tear everything down and rebuild it overnight oh right oh. <laughs> while you sleep you wake up the there next day and there's your new apartment oh there you go the there problem go. with that is you find yourself that uh you've been boarded into your bedroom Oh, nice. <laughs> we have the time and you need no doors. It was it was programmed wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Suddenly, your doorway is now a wall. You get up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night and you're like, oh, wait a minute. There used to be a door here. Oh. Uh, Krause, what's another story you want to hit up here? Well, we should talk a little bit more about um, the Google event today. Mm -hmm. um, some interesting th things were brought up. Um, there's obviously two new phones, uh, the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 3 XL. Um, they're going with the more bezel-less design, um, which is in vogue right now. Yes. No, I, I, I'm gonna, it's just going to be a lot of finger smudges as far yes. as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, they also did have the um, – we just talked about it. What was it called? The Google um, – The Slate? The Slate. The Home Hub? Oh, and the Home Hub. And they also quietly um, released a new Chromecast, if anybody is interested. So there's now a third generation. Oh, yeah. Chromecast. We, somebody found that at Best Buy last week. Yeah. <laughs> so and everything pretty much comes with a like a free tr free three months of uh, of YouTube TV. Three mm. months or six months. I because one. Yeah, was, I think it depends on what you're buying. Yeah. yeah, I think the phones are getting a six month. The YouTube Music, I guess they rebranded whatever their music service was. It's now YouTube Music. I'm still using Google Music, so I don't know what the... Well, then, no, there's YouTube Music as well. Um, okay. I don't know. I, I'm hoping they don't change my subscription because I like what I pay that okay. gets me the YouTube Premium plus yeah. the music thing. Oh, and then the, the Pixel Stand, too. They also created a uh, separate stand... Uh, what is that? Q powered, you know, wireless charging stand. Okay. But when it's in the stand, the phone kind of changes modes and gives you some, um, like it'll display pictures if you wanted to, or it'll display home information if you wanted to. It was kind of an interesting idea. If they say it's the best and fastest wireless charging stand there is. 
And, and and Chili, you say that there's a new home app. I think that's what we were waiting on for that guy to pass by to get his his yeah, the work. They, I was surprised because the announcement shows that the the new Google Home app is rolling out sooner to iOS devices than and is, will be coming uh, out. This has been a trend lately. Android users later this week. Mm-hmm. So um, that that kind of threw me off. But the, the one thing, and I, I can't find anything about it, one of the screenshots I saw showed one of the items in the home app being broadcast, which I don't know is that use an existing video camera to broadcast to YouTube? Is that use my voice and blare it through all Chrome, yeah, Chromecast you, devices? Like, what does broadcast do? You, I, I use it now to mess with the kids at home. Um <laughs> You can do applicable th- reasons. You can do things like "Hey G," broadcast, and then whatever you say after that gets announced across the house. It's almost like an inner old the old intercom system. Okay, but you have to have obviously multiple devices. So maybe they're going to they, do something. Did they with announce? Video. Are they going to continue to sell the Pixel Two at a, at the lower price? Because I was surprised to see the Pixel Three comes in a hundred and. Is it one hundred and fifty dollars above the price of the Pixel Two? Is it really? I didn't see the prices yet. I, that was yeah, the was thing it, I didn't yeah, the, see. Yeah, the, the new Android flagship uh, starts at eight hundred bucks, seven ninety nine, for the small one, but only fifty dollars more for the bigger one. Mm. Um, or wait a minute, no, one hundred dollars more. So um, that's cheaper. Ninety nine. That's cheaper than what I paid for the Pixel Two. Yeah. So. I don't know. It was it was interesting that they were talking about a price jump. <laughs> so new gadgets for Google. No more Did, Google Plus because it was hacked. Uh, <laughs> how about the duplex? Did you see that little demo? No. Was the duplex? So you're in a meeting or you're at dinner with the fam, and um, you push a button. Your phone rings. You know, you can push a button, and Google will actually answer the call for you, and bring up t- a text box. If you look about three quarters of the way down that page, sword, um, on the link that I provided. Oh, I got one wired here. There, okay. okay, there's a little video, yeah. but uh, basically it'll you know transcribe the phone call, and then you get some options based on what's being said, things like that, like report as spam. But so basically, you would they they market it as never speak to a telemarketer ever again. Oh. And this is like, what is the application for this? Is this something? This is the Google dialer. You know, the it's built in. This is built in the the, the Android phone. So this yes. is something that I can bring over. I can't bring this over to iPhone at this point. Not yet. Not, not yet. But it is something because there's a lot of like those kind of spam filter things that will like kind of hijack your calls a little bit so they can mm-hmm. filter those out and block them and do what they need to do. So this could be a situation like that. Yeah. Or what it, if it? Or, or what it, if we use the Google Voice? Will it come through that? But it, it seems like just the dialer on phone. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm it, telling it, you, sort of. To me, it's like it's like okay. you have your pickup, you have your answer. Yes. Cancel, respond with text. This is send to AI assistant type thing. And like I said, it was very cool though because as the person was speaking, it's transcribing it, so you can look down at your phone. And it shows you what they're saying to the Google AI. Wow. And then based this. on that, it gives and you this is other a freebie options. Thing. This is a freebie. Yeah, thing. they say it's coming. So, they go, yeah, and it's a freebie because now they get to train their AI. Yeah. And you know it. And I'm sure it's disclosed on the other end, right? Yeah. So now they get to do that with a giant. Um, oh, yeah. It'll probably say this calls. calls being answered by yes. Google AI yes. or whatever. You and know, then right? if it's a telemarketer, then it's going to be like they're not going to they're just going to not, not mess with it. But guess what? Maybe they won't call me again. Well, they will because it's just yeah. a mess of. I, will, I can dream, sir. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Like maybe you'll put, be put on a list. Yeah. This guy has AI. We don't don't bother with him. Well, you know, in the next month, the whole. Hey G, make me an appointment with da 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 is coming mm, with that. Wait, which with with da-da-da? with whoever. Oh. Like I can call. So you oh. know, I'm going to be calling with saying the, with the Amazon, with the Cortana, with the Siri. Me a, make me an appointment with Sorgatron Media. 
Yeah. And I'm going to have the AI call you and then you can record it. No. It's there there's there's it's being real, rolled out city by city in the next Jeez. in the next month city or two. City by city. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So they have to have like a localized server. I don't know. They but that's how they described it during huh. the conference. Or that's maybe just how they're doing the rollout. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, I, you know, we have not talked almost anything about your Microsoft experience. You yeah. went to, I can't remember the names of all these. Which Microsoft one? Ignite. Microsoft Ignite. Ignite. It's a big. I feel like this is a sales conference. Fest. No, it's like, it's a technology event um, for people who either write code, administer servers, um, basically IT, uh, Windows IT people. And technically, I'm not really even a Windows IT guy, so you might ask, well, why were you there? Well, I was there specifically to learn as much as I could about um, Intune, Windows Intune. So my company sent me to Microsoft Ignite because we have some needs, and the only way to fill those needs is through a product called Microsoft Intune. So I basically went there and... And sat in every Intune event that they had. You had your track already lined up. For yeah, you. exactly. And what does Intune do? Um, it's a, 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 a it can do both MDM mobile device management and mobile application management. Okay. So basically, limits what you you know creates specific applications and things on your phone, whether it's a corporate owned device or a personally owned device. Um, currently we use another product and um, you're looking to convert no i don't we're not looking to convert it's going to be an add-on on top of oh okay what the smart thing that microsoft did a bunch a few years ago was like oh hey we have all these great tools and our tools are wonderful and if you want to manage our tools guess what you have to use our tools looks like they have a pretty good uh, I'm looking at the website like the overview website for them Looks like they got to play against um, 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 education as well. Yep. Um, saying a few things from here. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Support your diverse mobile ecosystem. Protect data with your yeah. or or without with or without device enrollment. Achieve IT efficiency in yeah. the cloud. Yeah, but so like I said, so to do certain things with the Microsoft suite of products, mm -hmm. the only option you have is to use Intune to do that. So obviously this, but Microsoft Ignite isn't just about Intune. No, no, it's it's about Microsoft as a whole. Like uh, literally, yeah. if you're a Microsoft security specialist, you can go there. There's a track for you. If you're a Microsoft um, programmer in some specific, you know, SharePoint or something, there's mm -hmm. a track for you. There were thirty thousand people at this conference. Jeez. It was enormous. Jeez. Uh, very interesting. Um, Big, I learned a lot. I watched. Biggest takeaway from it? Um, it's surprising how little I knew about Intune before I got there and how much I know now. It's actually kind of, I was very impressed. I will mm -hmm. say that much. For as big as the conference is, the, the fact that you can literally walk up to an Intune booth that they actually had there, believe it or not, for this little tiny product that they have, they have people actually staffed there, and you could stand there for two hours bouncing questions off of a, off of an actual person with an actual email address and you know willing to give you their contact information to reach out to and stuff. It was very impressive, mm -hmm. um, and just the sheer volume of people. Like you, you okay? Yes, we work in IT and we're IT people. But when you see 30,000 you know, like-minded people all at the same place, it's it's mm -hmm. quite a, an impressive thing. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. That's awesome. Um, I, I, I get a similar feeling between like everything from The Gathering to like WrestleMania. Yeah. Seeing 70,000 people are like, oh, we're here for the same thing. Is, Everybody's is a, is a here cool for feeling. the exact yeah. same thing. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's such a crazy niche thing, right? You know, is you know, like that aspect of geekery, right? You're just getting on the bus in the morning and turning to somebody and going, "So, what did you learn yesterday?" Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, like, and everybody had, everybody could it, you know, talk about something. It was great. Awesome. Yeah, you know, going back. If I have the opportunity, yes, I'd love to. Fantastic. Well, I know Chilla's got to get out of here, so Chilla, thank you so much for hanging with us tonight. 
Thanks for having me. Check him out at chillatech.net and at chill on Twitter. John's chill on the Facebook. All right. Thanks a lot, Chilla. Have a good night. You too. Take care. Bye, Chilla. And then uh, real quick, I do want to give a shout out, our last shout out of the show to our good friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling. Yeah, a little byproduct of Alex, uh, Alexander Carr's uh, design, uh, alexcars.media. I'll do it off the top of my head because that ad is not in here. Uh, but anyways, uh, Occupy Pro Wrestling wants to show their support to a good cause for uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And uh, they'd like love to. We'd love you to have part of that uh, when you buy the merch at What a Maneuver. Fifty uh, percent of all normal merchandise proceeds will go to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. But wait, there's more. We're fi- they're finally releasing uh, merch with their logo, and they even have it in pink. And a hundred percent of proceeds from those items will go to the foundation. Uh, check out OccupyProWrestling.com. Uh, and uh, check out their gear at whatamaneuver.net. And there's a link at occupyprowrestling.com for a quick link to their store. Uh, and you can get more info on the Breast, Ca- Breast Cancer Research Foundation at bcrf.org. So go check that out for a great cause. Um, coming up, we have Extra Life this weekend. It's going to be here starting Saturday for 24 hours uh, in the Sorgatron Media Studio. We'll be um, streaming that, of course, on uh, the Sorgatron Media Twitch, probably Facebook. I mean, we're still kind of deciphering that. We'll have a few different streams, and there'll be a page up for everybody to give donations. Uh, I believe it's for the Children's Hospital Network. Um, and uh, if you're in the area, here in the Beachview area, Saturday or Sunday, come in, give some support. And I think we're going to announce some stuff that people, if they want to drop in and play with the guys, uh, you can do that as well. Uh, so please, uh, looking forward to that. And a shout-out, because tis the season, uh, it's going to be Pro Wrestling Night at the Scare House this Sunday. So if you go out there, a lot of the guys from the local area will be out there hanging out and going through the Scare House uh, over at IndieWrestling.us oh, uh, social media. Uh, we've had a few videos. Um, some, of the, some of the guys and girls have been uh, cutting promos on the Scare House, uh, challenging it, saying they're not going to be afraid. And we'll see how that turns out in the end uh, when we get there on Sunday. So get your tickets over at ScareHouse.com. Uh, come and check it out. Uh, you're, these guys will be out and about and uh, and chatting with you guys too. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And we're going to take some video and and see what we can see what we can do that night. So first first ever first ever one of these. Oh, very so, cool. But thank you, Ron Krause, for joining us. Crazy Krause on the Twitter with the K's. Yep, Ron Krause on Facebook. You know, I've actually had people from the show reach out for tech questions. Fantastic. So if anybody ever needs anything, I'm around. Go at Sorgatron on the Twitter and check out everything at SorgatronMedia.com. Thank you, everybody that's been hanging out in the chat all night long. And uh, and uh, thank you, you've been an awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at SorgatronMedia.com.